you have to memorize the prefixes for naming these. So one carbon's meth, two is eth, uh, three is but, four, uh, four is, three is prop, and then four is but. Meth, eth, prop, but. Okay, and then after that, the prefixes are the same as the prefixes we used in um, other covalent compounds. Pent, hex, hept, ot, non, and dec. Got that? We're only going to have to count to ten. Okay? The backbone of, of any organic compound are carbons, okay? If you were to, if you were to, there are some exceptions. Methane is one of those, but if you were to define organic compounds, it for most organic compounds, the vast, by and away, the vast majority of organic compounds are those in which you have at least two carbons bonded together in the structure. That doesn't apply to everything in every case, but in almost every case. If there's at least two carbons bonded together, it's an organic compound. And you're going to name it using the organic rules. Okay? Um, acetate is a polyatomic ion, and sometimes we would not call it organic depending on how, what it's bonded to. Okay? That's kind of like another exception. Okay? This, is, this one's an exception because there's no bond between this carbon and some other carbon, but it's still clearly organic because it's a, it's a substance that comes out of that. Okay? Uh, acetate, if you make a salt out of acetate, like you bond acetate with titanium or something, I don't think anybody would call that an organic compound, okay? But acetic acid, we would call it an organic acid. So it's a little bit tricky with some of them, but I'm not going to throw, throw something at you that's going to be so tricky you can't, you know, easily figure it out, okay? All right, so this would be meth, eth, pro, butane, okay, butane. All single bonds, and that's what the suffix means. Say what now? Ain. Ain is the suffix that means only single bonds between carbons. Only single bonds between carbons. Okay? When we get to the more complex structures like this, and by the way, this, this type of um, organic compound has a couple of other names when we're talking about structures. Since this is nothing but hydrogens and carbons, we call this a hydrocarbon. So it's another classification of this type of compound, a hydrocarbon. Okay? A hydrocarbon. Methane's a hydrocarbon, nothing but carbons and hydrogens. Okay. And since and since there is nothing but single bonds between the carbons, this has a different classification we call an alkane. An alkane. Okay? Does that make sense? Alkanes are any carbon chains that have nothing but single bonds between the carbons. A L K A N E. Yeah, only single bonds between the carbons. So, like, if it had a. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll get to double bonds and triple bonds shortly. Okay. All right. So, this is kind of. Now, it. Organic compounds get really, really big and complex. And so uh, organic chemists, and in particular the organization called the International Union of Physical, no, I'm sorry, Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC, has come up with a naming system um, that makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, and that's where we get this butane and methane from, okay? But we also have a shorthand way of writing formulas like this. <clears throat> the first of the shorthand ways, I'm going to show you two of those, is called a condensed structural formula. So these kind of formulas are complete, and a condensed structural formula takes each of the carbon groups and condenses it down kind of to a single formula, which we string together. So methane, okay, that's the actual molecular formula, but it's also the condensed structural formula for methane. The condensed structural formula for but butane, though, is CH3, so we take this group right here and condense it down. 
If you take this group and condense it down, that's two hydrogens, CH2, and this group, CH2, and this group, CH3, and condense it down. Okay? So this is also butane, but it's a condensed structural formula. If you wrote C4H10, what 10, that would not be a structural formula at all. It would be a molecular formula, but not a structural formula. Okay? okay? And in, in organic chemistry, it's the structure that's really, really key. Okay? Any of you are thinking about going into anything that has to do with medicine, the structure of these compounds is the beginning for you to understand biochemistry. Okay? And it's the structure of how you put all these things together and the more complex things we call proteins that makes everything in your body function properly. Okay? The only part of your body that isn't made of proteins are a few minerals and some, like, sugars and things like that. Of course, fat, I guess, is not. Well, even that's, though, structural. But everything else is protein. So your ha eyes, your hair, fingernails, skin, uh, blood vessels, blood corpuscles, everything is made of proteins. And the function of those proteins, those f proteins perform a function. Some of them actually change their shape because of the chemistry in your body to perform that function. Okay? So you've studied in biology about, um, like, the cell wall has these um, protein structures that, are, that force certain chemicals or ions across that cell wall. And then they, and the other other proteins allow a free flow of certain ions, but not other like might, might allow water to flow without other things being able to flow. And so those are structure structures within your body that make your body do all the things it does. Even breathing is a chemical process. The heme um, molecule in your hemoglobin changes its structure based on the pH in your in your bloodstream. So where your lungs are located and you're breathing in all this oxygen, your pH increases. And the heme changes its shape to allow CO2 to flow out and oxygen to flow in. And then that heme flows through your bloodstream down to the tips of your fingers and things like that where the, where the pH is high or lower and it changes its shape again and it allows the oxygen to flow out and the CO2 to flow in. And that's the way, I mean, it's all chemistry, okay? Everything in your body it comes down to, eventually, chemistry. Well, this is the beginning of understanding all of those structures, okay? So this is a great way to condense the thing, but when we get those really, really complex things, um, and I mean, we're talking about comp far less complex than a protein, but very complex nevertheless, we need something that's even more, less complex than this that makes it make sense. So when you open up, if you get, go to the doctor and they give you a prescription, go to the uh, drugstore, they give you a, uh, a, a bottle with all the pills or whatever in it, and you open up in the bag there's a, or in the box, there's a piece of paper, and there's a structural drawing of that chemical compound inside there. And that's pretty big and complex. And the, we start by just taking nothing but the bonds between all the atoms except those bonds to hydrogen. All the bonds between all the atoms except those between hydrogens. And that's all we draw. So I have four bonds, or I'm sorry, three bonds, four carbons, three bonds between those carbons, and we're not going to draw the bonds to the hydrogens. And it's going to look something like this, one, two, three. And that's also a structural form for butane. Okay? So at every end of a line or every corner, there's a carbon. All we're really showing are the bonds. Now, if there's any other atom other than carbon, we would have to draw those. But if all we have are carbons, they're always at the end of a line or at a corner. Okay? So that's a called a skeletal formula. And this one is a condensed structural formula. Yes? Well, what would you do? A dot? Maybe. I don't know. No, there, there is no, there really is no skeletal formula for carbon because 
there are no bonds between carbon and some other, some other element other than hydrogen. Okay, like there's no, so, okay. I mean, you know, maybe that's it. I mean, you could say that, but I mean, you know, I didn't tell you anything, right? Okay. It, it, in terms of organic chemistry, it basically doesn't have any structure that helps us at all. Okay? All right. So those are the three kinds of uh, formulas. And you kind of got to mentally be able to transpose between one and the other. You have to know that if this is a carbon right here, every carbon has to have four bonds. Okay? Now, the bonds could be double bonds that make two bonds. Or they could be single bonds. But when you add up all the number of bonds, you've got to have four bonds to a carbon. Yes? You said depending on whether like, it's an alkene or whatever, it just like, tells you how much, if there's going to be a double bond or anything. Mm -hmm. Are there all going to be all double bonds between all the carbons? No. If there's, if there's just one double bond, then we'll call it something other than an alkene. So how do you know what it is? Like if you were like, given, like, say, a like, draw of this kind of... Oh, you'll, we're, that's what we're going to spend the day going through, okay? Probably today and at least by the, at least tomorrow, too, okay? Maybe longer if necessary, okay? My plan had been to do it yesterday and today, but obviously I was out yesterday, so we're playing a little bit of catch up. Was the test supposed to be Thursday? I was planning on the test being Friday. Not good? Really? Okay, we'll see. Yeah. Whatever works for you, whatever works. I mean, I, that's, you can do it Monday, you can do it Thursday, whatever works, okay? But I, I, I'm not sure that we're going to do it on Friday yet, okay? But you need, if you haven't started working on that practice test, you do need to be working on that, okay? All right, so we get this name, an alkane, okay? ALK basically means it's a hydrocarbon. And the A and E means there's all single bonds. Okay? Whenever we have a double bond in a structure, so this is all single bonds, a double bond in a structure is an A, L, K, E, and E. And E and E is the suffix for double bonds. Okay? So this is a hydrocarbon double bond, at least one. Okay? Hmm? It means that uh, we have an alkene is basically a hydrocarbon with at least one double bond. Okay? Alkene. Alkene, yes. Alk just means a, a hydrocarbon. With at least one double bond. And you're probably familiar with another term we use for <coughs> things with uh, double and triple bonds, for that matter. Uh, they're called unsaturated. Everybody, unsaturated fats? Unsaturated fats have hydrocarbon chains in them that have at least one or more double or triple bond. Okay? If it does have the ALK in the we know it's just carbon and hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, it could, I could refer to some part of a structure. I could say that a fat has an alkane or alkene or alkyne <coughs> chain on it, okay? So it might, it might, be, it might not be talking about the whole structure, but some part of the structure, okay? All right, if we have a triple bond, that's an alkyne. Hydrocarbon, triple bond. All right? All right. Draw all three structural formulas for heptane. <coughs> 